Welcome aboard Jim Kello, Master Model Railroader. He can be found on his Facebook at Jim Kello MMR. He's also doing some Zoom meetings called New Tracks, which we'll talk about later on in this interview. So welcome aboard, Jim. A bit, a little bit nervous about interviewing someone of your stature regarding um, the, the accolades that you're that you have been awarded over the years. I would really like to to chat to you about those. So welcome aboard. So for anyone that doesn't know Jim out there, he was the 202nd Master Model Railroader to be awarded, and that was back in 1991. Um, so welcome aboard, Jim. So thank you for coming along. Oh, nice to be here. And, and please don't be nervous about the interview. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a guy that loves to build models. Ah, lovely. So th- yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking the time away from your family. So, so second, so 202nd master model rider. So can you sort of talk us to, through the process, I should say, how, how this comes about and maybe a bit about your modeling in general? I try to. Um, when I got involved, the, uh, the national chairman was a guy by the name of Rick Shoup. And uh, another friend of mine in, in Florida at the time by the name of Ronnie Rives had just gotten his uh, MMR. And I had heard about him. He was a, uh, a modeler that uh, modeled Lionel 3 rail. And I thought, well, geez, if he could get it, because I had an extensive uh, Lionel 3 rail uh, layout in my basement at that point, I thought, well, if he can get it, maybe I can get it. So I called up Rick and said, uh, hi there, I'm, my name's Jim Kello. I'd like to uh, get involved in your program. How do I do that? Lovely. And he, he said, uh, well, you got to belong to the NMRA. So I joined the NMRA. Uh, it was, uh, I had the first thing that I did, I, I contacted the, uh, at Rick's suggestion, I contacted the uh, regional uh, achievement program chairman. Uh, in Michigan, sure. and uh, he sent uh, two two people over to my home, and they kind of looked at my railroad and all, and uh, you know they they you know oh yeah it's nice blah blah, mm-hmm. uh, but they weren't very impressed I didn't think so that kind of got to me a little bit because I thought well geez I've been a model railroader for a long sure. long time most of my life and. I, I built a lot of things, and I don't understand why they're not more impressed. Sure. Well, I had, I had scratch built three flat cars, yep. and uh, they, uh, I thought they looked great. And I had put uh, Lionel trucks and couplers on them so that I could run them on my Lionel Railroad. Sure, sure. And sure. Uh, I wanted them judged for the cars uh, uh, award. And they looked at it and uh, they said, well, there's no point in us judging it because flat cars just aren't more, just aren't difficult enough for we to, for us to give you a merit award. If you want to, you can count them as part of the cars you b- need to build, but uh, we're not, you know, we're just not going to bother because sure. flat cars sure. just aren't difficult enough. Sure. So sure. I thought, well, okie dokie. So about three months later, I met uh, a person that was uh, worked for General Motors, and he was in their uh, model building department. I used to go over to his house every Saturday morning, and we'd spend the day. I'd bring a dozen donuts. His wife would make us a pot of black coffee. Ah, oh, beautiful. We'd go, to, we'd go to his basement. I would sit on his left elbow, and I would watch him scratch build in brass, whatever oh, he was building. Lovely. So, so out of that, out of that, I learned. Finally, I learned how to build in brass, and that started me down the uh, the road for the MMR. Oh, lovely. Um, is it a? I'm assuming the the initially having those two gentlemen coming out and you know perusing your layout, and then you showing them the cars. That would have been quite an intimidating process, I would have thought. Um, did you find it sort of that way, or you sort of just took it sort of a fire in your in your in your belly, so to speak, and go, okay, I'm going to prove these two gentlemen wrong, and I'm going to improve my modelling, and and away we go. Well, I had made up my mind that uh, since I was a model railroader, and had been one all my life, sure. and had joined this sure. organization, and they had this program, yeah, there wasn't any yeah. reason why I couldn't be a master model railroader. So Excellent. whatever it took, Excellent. as far as I was concerned, that's what I was going to do. Yeah. I will tell yeah. you this. Everybody that goes through the program, and I think it's the greatest educational program that you can possibly go through. 
Awesome. Uh, if you if you want to learn how to build model railroads, that this program is fantastic and it will Excellent. help you. Excellent. But it but your but your success and how easy it is for you is a hundred percent dependent on the people that you deal with. Right. And and you just have to uh, you have to you have to deal with it. Sure, sure. Um, so let's talk us now. Did I read correctly? You're the you're the seventh only to achieve all disciplines. Was that? Did I read that correctly? Yep, that's what, me. What, I've what, got what, them all. What does that What does that entail? And then we'll go through whatever you know. You have to. I think it's seven awards. You have to get seven different kinds of awards to be a master model railroad. Right. Well, there's a, there's eleven total categories. Right. And then there's another category called the Gold Spike Award. Yep. Uh, the Gold Spike is normally uh, the first one that, that a person might want to try to get because it it doesn't really require that much scratch building and that kind of thing. And it's, uh, it, you know, if you have a model railroad, if you've ever built a model railroad or, or built some modules, that kind of thing, you, know, you should be able to qualify for the Gold Spike. Right. So I have okay. them all. I'm... And there's, uh, they used to, back uh, back when Rick Shoup was the uh, national chairman and some other people, uh, they came up and they went to the board of directors and they said, look, you know, after a person gets to be the master model railroad, there's no point, uh, there, there's no reason for him to continue necessarily if there's no final award and, and reason for him to continue in the other categories. Oh, so they said... <laughs> So they said, well, what we don't want to do, we want to create a category called Grand Master Mile Railroader. Okay. And the board voted it down. Wrong. And I think when that when that happened, a lot of people said, well, you know, we got what they offer and that's all we're going to do. Sure. And I thought, sure. and I thought, well, you know, that's kind of a challenge. And let me see just how many I can get. So yeah. I finally ended up, I got them all. Ah, lovely, lovely. So I'm just looking at the website here. I had a, a quick look at it yesterday when I was researching it. So... Obviously, the NMRA is probably a fledgling sort of organisation in within Australia, or an arm or division within Australia here. So there is some gentlemen here that I am making contact with to see whether that's something that I might do to improve my modelling as well. Because you rightfully point out that if you know, with these master modellers scrutinising your work or judging your work you, you can only but learn from that hopefully so as long as you sort of take it in the right sort of way hence the question i asked is it an intimidating process i suppose so it all comes down to the individual i would think whether you know they take that as a constructive well, but, but, sorry don't. yeah but let me make up to you. you know you really don't have to enter contest yeah. you know a lot of people say well to get this you have to go through contest and all of this kind of thing you really don't yeah. have to the uh, NMRA people will come to your home. You can get everything judged right right in your basement or in your sure, sure, den or wherever sure. you have it and so yeah. forth. So you don't have to really bother with contests. Yeah. The first contest that I ever entered, I was I was just terrified. I, yeah. I really wasn't sure whether my model would stack up, and I didn't really want to, to have a lot of uh, people laugh at me. So yeah. I went into the contest room with my model in a shoebox. Oh, okay. And I think... And I figured, you know, if, if everybody, uh, you know, is uh, there and the models really are much better looking than my model, then I won't even bother taking it out of the box. Yeah. Well, I finally, I took it out of the box and uh, I won first place. And after that, oh, lovely. I, I never worried about entering a contest again. Yeah. It, the one thing that you have to understand, one of the things that the MMR gives you is the confidence that you know in your heart and soul if you see it and you want to build it, you can build it. Yeah, sure. That yeah, confidence, sure. that confidence that you get in being able to build anything that you see that you want is just phenomenal, in my opinion. Ah, lovely. So what what is the... Okay, so we're looking at... We've got railroad equipment, master building, the motive power on the cars, which you first touched on, uh, railroad yeah. settings, which is more the, the scenery sort of aspect, uh, the yep. railroad construction and operation and service to the hobby which is a great one as well um so out of all those four sort of main categories what what was your favorite and then what was the favorite subcategory that you sort of you really enjoyed building something for or getting involved with 
prototype. I, I had a lot of fun with prototype. I went down uh, downtown Detroit, and they had uh, they recently built a trolley barn downtown Detroit. Sure. And I got I uh, went to the city, and I got a copy of their as-built engineering plans for that trolley barn. Yeah. Scaled yeah. them down to uh, O scale, and uh, built it. And that was the structure that 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 was the key structure for the trolley barn. I had a background uh, that was painted for it. I had uh, some uh, uh, grates that went around the uh, the trees that I had to have uh, made out of uh, uh, brass for me. And uh, that, that was really a lot of fun because I had the original as-built plans. Sure, sure. So, no, that's lovely. That's really lovely. So I'm assuming, so not delving into someone that might be might not know a lot about uh, the Organoid or the association. I'm assuming it, uh, you pay some sort of membership fee each year and then you get a certain amount of um, value for that membership. Is that correct? You pay, uh, I, I have no idea what the current dues are yeah. because when I, jo- I joined back uh, in 1991, yeah. uh, I paid, uh, at, at that point, I paid, uh, I think it was $500, and I had a life membership in the organization. Sure. Uh, if sure. They've done away with the life memberships now, so you can't even buy one anymore. Right. Um, okay. so, so it's an annual dues, uh, and then you belong to the local region. Well, there's a European region. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know about the one for Australia. I, I don't yes. know what region that falls in. Uh, it yeah, may be. It, there is one. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm just trying to think of the name of it. Pacific, maybe. Pacific or Australasia. I, I, I anyway. don't know, uh, yeah. but I do know when I was the, I was in Australia in ninety ninety one. I think ninety maybe. Yeah. Uh, right before. Yeah. And uh, I, I called up a gentleman uh, who I found through the NMRA because they used to publish the names of people and where they lived. Right. Uh, this, was, this was before lawsuits and all of that. Yeah, sure. Uh, and yeah. so I pulled his name out of that list and called him up, uh, met him in uh, Australia. He took me around and, and I visited, I think it was five different modelers at that point. Sure. And for the life of me, I can't remember their names right now. Um, but uh, I, there was a, a significant amount of Australian modeling. I mean, first class, really blow your mind uh, model making over there. Yeah. And a lot of yeah. the uh, the models that I see that, that people post and the fine scale modeling that's being done and the scratch building that is being done, uh, the manufacturers, uh, Outland Models and some of those uh, organizations, I've I've written about in my articles, yeah. uh, and about I guess six months, maybe a little longer ago, I wrote an article that was 100% uh, Australian models and Australian wow. manufacturers. Okay. Uh, so I, you know, it, there, there's a significant amount of model railroading in Australia. Sure. Uh, it's not in O scale necessarily. There is yeah. some, but but not that much. Most of it is uh, OO scale. Yeah, um, yeah. Predominantly, uh, oh, I found here, obviously, yeah, HO or or OO for the the British modelers. We do have a few few groups here. So, so you're active, still actively a member of the the association. Oh yeah, I I don't attend the meetings and that kind of thing anymore. I'm sure. I'm 81 years old now. Yeah. Okay. So I I spend my time. I've been retired for about uh, 23 years now, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so I I spend my time doing three things. Yeah. I write yeah. articles for the two magazines. Yeah. I do my Zoom meetings I, yeah. I host, and I build models. And okay. that is, I, I probably spend 10 hours a day doing that. Love and uh, that's that's my life right now. I am jealous of that. That would be. <laughs> but on the other end, I'm sort of middle-aged. Uh, the, the 40 years behind you, so to speak. So. Yeah, I got you. I got, you'll get there. <laughs> yeah, one day. <laughs> one day. Um, okay, so are we, I suppose, the, some of the podcasts I listen to, and I, I won't go into names or anything, oh, that's not fair, but um, sort of get down on the, the association, have you sort of found that to sort of be the, the case on some of the, the, the what well, I'm going to call bad press out there for the, the NMRA? 
Well, you know, it used to be that uh, a lot of people said, well, why would you join the NMRA? Why, why pay the dues? Uh, the answers came back, well, we set standards. Uh, the answer to that was, okay, you set standards, but, you know, that's, uh, you know, why am I going to pay my money, you know, for you to set standards for manufacturers? Uh, you know, if I don't like their product, I just don't buy their product. So they'll either conform to what the standards, whatever they are, or, yeah. you know, go out of business. So big deal, you've set standards. Then they came back and they said, well, but you meet a lot of people. Well, that's true. You meet a lot of people. But now you've got Zoom, you've got the Internet, you've got Skype like we're on right now. Sure. Uh, sure. You've got all of the YouTube uh, videos and everything. Uh, so, you know, how important is that, particularly in this time of the virus and how long is that going to last? And, you know, people my age and even a little younger than I am are, yeah. are really fearful. You know, if we get it, we're gone. So. Yeah. You know, how you know, how many shows and how many events are we going to attend other than through the kind of thing that, that we're that you and I are talking on right now or the Zoom meetings that I'm that I'm doing. So they said they said, Well, but you meet a lot of people. Well, I've answered that. So the critics come back with that kind of response. Then I'll say to them, but the achievement program is probably the best modeling educational program around. And if you really want to to learn some of the intricacies of, of model railroading and construction and so forth, uh, that's the place to go. So yeah. Uh, yeah. With, with that said, you know, that's that's why I joined as a life member. I got my MMR, went yeah. right to the desk and, and wrote them a check, and, and that was it. Yeah. So if, you're invo- if you want the educational aspect of it, that's a major reason. The yeah. second reason I'll give you, is, is the program uh, that the manufacturers are coming up with now to give discounts if you belong to the NMRA. Wrong. So okay. if you are buying kits, if you're buying parts, if you're buying uh, tools, all of that kind of thing now, okay. if you're a member of the NMRA, you can pay for your membership just by getting the discounts off the items that you're buying uh, through okay. those manufacturers. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's fantastic. You obviously a mind reader because one of my questions was obviously we're living in a very very unique world right now. That my sort of question was the the benefits we you're going to gain from that, but obviously you've already sort of indicated what those benefits are. No matter no matter what virus or not virus, and I sort of don't want to get into that to sort of bring down the uh, the feel of the of this interview with you. Um, I think there's enough in our press about that right now so i think we'll stay well away from the vir- the virus i'll call it but um but it, i suppose it's like any organization isn't it that you know that they've got to move with the t- or try to move with the times the best they can being the, the you know that it's so fluid right now so um i suppose the only other, are we seeing a lot of younger are you seeing a lot of younger modelers i suppose coming into the, the mra in mra i should say i don't think so I really don't think so. I think uh, I could be wrong about that. My best guess is they're looking at the same market that I think that I market to, yeah. and that's roughly yeah. uh, 40 and older, yeah. uh, male. Uh, now, are there ladies that want to be involved in model railroading? Yes. Is that a prime yeah. market? I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, uh, sure. the, kids, the kids that are in their 20s and their 30s, you know, if you think back in your youth, uh, you got into high school. Hello, you met girls. Hello, yeah. you found automobiles. Yeah. Hello, you got <laughs> all of these other interests. You know, sure. you, you found sure. maybe clubs or fraternities or sororities yeah. or, yeah. you know, whatever. But model railroading was not during that time in my life. That was yeah. not a, a real biggie, although I was a model railroader. I had too many other things on, on my yeah, plate sure. to worry about joining organizations and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. Obviously, competing sort of, yeah, competing, what am I trying to say? Uh, other competing things to do, you know, sports, girls, which is the big one for me. It was anyway, and cars. I wasn't so much into cars, but, um, but yeah, it's interesting you say that. Um, I do see... Yeah, but wasn't, of, wasn't, it, wasn't it great when you got your first bicycle? Wasn't that oh, freedom just to be able oh, to get on something yeah. and not have to walk everywhere? Yeah, 
And I'll still go back to that. We live in a, a rural property, sort of 45 minutes sort of south of our main city and uh -huh. I live near a, a, a pine plantation. So I quite often get on my, my mountain bike and go riding. So after we do this interview, that's what I'll be doing. So, uh, Oh, it sounds yeah, great. Sounds getting great. Out, getting out into the fresh air, it's lovely. So, yeah. So I suppose it's very interesting because um, there's a lot of commentary around that fact. Are we getting the the younger modelers into our hobby and i'll class myself in that that 40 to plus group with you with yourself jim um yeah so at, at 45 years of age that yeah it's very interesting um obviously i don't see it here in australia so to speak because we're a lot smaller condensed sort of amount of people that are in this hobby uh, we only have one sort of major exhibition a year that obviously got cancelled due to due to events but which a lot of young kids will come along to, but it'll be interesting to see whether they actually ever get into model row riding, say, like what you and I would do, because I call it my passion. It's my life. I'm always thinking about trains, even when I'm at work, when I probably shouldn't be. But it's always, <laughs> it's always, it's always you, you know, you know the drill. Sometimes you, you, you try to can't quite get something and you just like you, you almost start dreaming about it. I don't know if, if you're the same, but then you'll get up and I've always got to, pad and piece of paper next to bed where if i wake up i'll write something down feverishly and then try to get back to sleep but anyway that's the little insight to my mind anyway so i understand so, <laughs> so i i see the nmra as it, trying to adapt um in our current times and they've come up with uh, obviously nmra x which is i've watched a few of these and some of these are, are really good initiatives i think where um, I can't remember the name of the, the gentleman. He's from Europe, I think. Gordy or Geordi, I think is his name. He, I think he was the, the driving force behind this where they've basically set up these Scots. virtual virtual hangout he's type a, things. Yeah. That he's I in think, Scotland, I believe. Yeah, he's, he's found that... I, I've watched, as I said, I've watched a few of these and they go for, I think, some 24 hours. So some of them I can watch and quite a few Australian modelers and modelers from all around the world, which is which is quite good, which I think is a little bit of a stopgap. And that's um, sort of the, some of the, the negativity you've heard around the association. It's quite interesting that they've they've gone into this. And I think it's quite good because this this is where model railroading is isn't it effectively we don't know how long this is going to be around you and i are chatting like this so the skype the zoom the the google hangouts or whatever people are using is going to be the the new norm for the for the siebel future so to speak um and i don't see these interviews your zoom type calls going away um i really don't i think that's just it's now the next phase of our hobby which is very computer driven i suppose um, which is I'm hoping, and tell me if I'm wrong, and I'd like, I'm interested in your thoughts, Jim. I'm very interested in see whether this is going to bring the youngsters back to our hobby because they're very tech savvy. Um, they're obviously into their computer games where we'll get to train controller software in a sec. Um, that it's, you've almost got the best of both worlds, I think. You're, you're, you're creating something physical and you're creating something on a computer and you're using those two things to, to run a model railway, I don't think there's anything more exciting than that. So what do, what would you think about that? Um, let me try You ask several questions. Let me try yeah, to back up with just a minute. Sure. Um, you know, there's a group in Scotland. There's an NMRA division, a Scottish division. Um, and I forget the person's name, Gordon Gordy, I think is the yeah. first name, but I'm, I'm don't, I, I'm not sure about that, but they have, uh, zoom calls every once in a while, once a month, I think. And I've been on one of them with them. And one of the things that they said was they have trouble, uh, going to shows or going somewhere where they can get their models judged for the NMRA achievement program. Right. And I said, and I said, well, why, why is that difficult? And they said, well, we just don't have many members up here. Uh, we only really have uh, very few shows or anything like that, and we don't have uh, many model railroaders up here that are into the achievement program. And our region out of London 
uh, says that uh, in order to get your model judge, the person that does the judging has to have that achievement award. And he said, therefore, if I want to get something judged, I, I don't have anybody that I can call that can either come to my home or, or help me get that award. Sure. sure. So, so listen to this. I, I believe, and I told him, told the members this on, on the Zoom call, I think that if you talk to the national chairman now, Frank Coach, K-O-C-H, uh, and talk to him about it, I think Frank will tell you that uh, you can get your modeling done or a lot of your modeling done by Zoom. Uh, and the people from the NMRA will use Zoom to try to help you uh, through the achievement program. Now, sure. can you get all of it done? I don't think so right now. In my opinion, there is no reason that I can think of or that I, I believe Zoom could not be the way in the future that the achievement program has sure. the judging sure. done for all of their achievement program awards. Yeah. You can take Zoom, you can take Zoom photos as you build models. It doesn't just have to be that you're showing the final model on a on a Zoom at seven o'clock some night. You know, you can take photos of it as you go along and include those in, in the uh, presentation that you make to the judges. Sure. So I don't I don't see why the Zoom capability or something like the Zoom capability yeah. cannot in the future become the way that the NMRA says, yeah, we can do the judging over the Zoom. Yeah, now, okay. some people in California particularly uh, would agree with that. Other people in the NMRA say, oh, no, 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 that's can't do that. Can't do that. But I think it's possible that that's going to be where we where we end up at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think that would be great, particularly for young people, for yeah. new people coming into the hobby that are absolutely terrified about having people come into their home that they've never met before and judging what they believe is uh, their best work and, yeah. and telling them, you know, one of the things judges will tell you is how on earth do you say to a modeler, it just doesn't stack up. It's just not that good a work. Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah. Well, it's not easy to do that. No, no. But at the same time, if, if the person wants to be in, involved in the program to improve their modeling, it's the best the best you can possibly do. I yeah. mean, that's, if you're not honest with them, what are they gaining from talking to you? Yeah, true, true. It's easy, as you rightfully point out, it's all in the deliveries. And I'm sure there's some judges out there that are probably not so good at it, and there's some that are really good at it, but also is the individual how they take that uh, constructive feedback as well, isn't it? Whether they take it as full-on criticism or as you did in, in, your, in your occasion is a fire in your belly and say, oh, I just want to do this and I'm just going to do everything I can to to further my modelling, so to speak. So Now, your second question about computerizing model railroading, Yeah, I, th I think that could very well, for a lot of modellers, be the future particularly for two classes of modelers. One, the museum or the large club, something like that. Yeah. The second area is modelers who have a reasonably large, complicated railroad that they want to run, uh, maybe having to have more than one or two people running it at a time. Sure. Uh, but let's go back to the virus. And right now, I couldn't have three or four people come to my home comfortably and operate with me, my model railroad. Sure, sure. Now, if I can computerize my model railroad, and then I can go into that computer system and pick, say, a train that I want to run while the computer is running everything else on my model railroad, yeah. then I only need myself. Yep. And for the virus areas, you know, particularly the ones that are hot spots, we call them in the U.S., sure. uh, to sure. me, that has an awful lot of appeal to an awful lot of model railroaders. Yep. It, it, it takes the place of having to have a crew come in or four, five, three, how many ever you need to run your model railroad of people that have to agree a certain time and date to come to your home and help you. Sure. This way you can go sure. into your area, wherever it is, an attic, a basement, wherever, a separate building, uh, and and go in, turn the light on, press a button, your trains start running, everything starts operating, and, and then if you want to run a specific train over a specific course during a specific time, you can just pick that off the computer and run it yourself, but you don't need a whole crew to run everything else while you're doing that. Yeah, that's right. I think, 
I think that that is fantastic. I'm, yeah. I'm working on an yeah. article right now about it. Yeah. Uh, I've asked yeah. you to help me uh, help me yeah. with that. Sure. Uh, and and for your viewers, you know, imagine this, if you will, you're by yourself. You have a uh, huge model railroad. I mean, this is huge. This is five levels of model railroad. Yeah. You go yeah. in the room, you press a button, the trains start running. You're modeling a mountain area as part of it. One of the trains starts to go up the mountain. A little bit before it starts to go up the mountain, it automatically stops. All the other trains, accessories, everything else is running along. This train stops. You haven't done a thing. All you've done is press the one button and you're just sitting around in your chair having a beer. <laughs> the train stops. The train stops because the detection system connected to the computer has determined the weight of that train yep. and the amount of weight the locomotive heading up the train can pull. And the computer has said to itself, I got to have a helper engine go to that train and, and hook up. So the train stops. Another engine in a local roundhouse nearby starts up, goes through the turntable, gets on the proper track, hooks up to the caboose of the train, blows its whistle to announce its arrival. The head engine blows its whistle back to acknowledge it. The train starts up. And the speed of the train going up the hill is determined by the weight detected of the train and the amount of speed that can be put on that train based on the two engines connected to it. And the train gets to the top of the mountain and goes about its business. Yeah. All of that is done. You're about finished with your beer. You're sitting in your lounge chair and you haven't moved. That, that is happening today yeah. in the United States on a model railroad and it's all done with a program that anybody can buy that is sold uh, on the market today. Yeah. Now, the NMRA has a program uh, that they're trying to put together that one day will be able to do all of that. Sure. But that program, as I'm told at least, cannot accomplish all of that today. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow, supposedly it can. Today it can. But this other program is available on the market. It is, yes. In fact, I think this is the same program that you use to run your model railroad. It is. And I was just about to make comment on that. Obviously, you have been reading the user manual, manual for train controller. So I don't um, run mine, so to speak, like that. But I know there are a lot of modelers in the forum that will talk about that. Um, a few... Gen uh, uh, US gentleman that I've spoken to um, but you're exactly right I've with my railway just to touch on briefly that I have a, a 30 foot by 30 foot model railway I'm what you probably would call a reasonably lone wolf modeler um, there's only a few gentlemen that come and help me um, either run it or build it but most of the time it's just me and maybe one other so I've set up the scheduling um, and within train controller scheduling's not time well you can make it time based but um, scheduling predominantly for train controller is point a to point b um, operations that you set up that i've set trains up that i can either run them fully automatic right the way through to fully manual operation with the same schedule with a click of a button so if i've got more operators i can run trains that literally can be as i said operated manually or I can sort of sit in between so I can start a train out from a yard location that's fully laid and ready to go and I can send it to a an industry or a shunting or a town a township in my case and then I can shunt that train out so whilst I'm while that train sort of running its uh, transversing its through itself through the railway or railroad I should say that all the the turnouts or switches are all selected all the collision avoidance is all built in into the system and I don't have to do anything with that train until it gets to the other end. So a lot of people might think, well, that that's rather boring. But from my point of view, because I don't have the physical individuals to run that railway, 
um, and a lot don't right now, as you rightfully point out, Jim, regarding what's going on um, in our world right now. It's, I think it is the way, and I've, I've been running the program for, or this piece of software, I should say, for the best part of five or, or six years now. So um, I'm by no means an expert. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. I've got a reasonable grasp of what it can do, but um, I think it's the best on the market and the best going around, but I'm a little bit biased as well. So it is a, a little... A little bit of money in the in the back end of it, because um, there's quite a bit of hardware you need to to purchase as well to detect where the trains are. But it's yeah, as you rightfully point out, it's a, a fantastic program uh, or software, I should say. Well, but when you start talking about a lot of money, I have no idea how much you spend. It's none of my business. But I would say for a couple of thousand dollars, you're in business. Definitely. And the, the beauty so, of the, the beauty of train control, you can sort of build build to it. So you sort of it's very modular on the way it's approached. So you you'll you'll download the software and you'll draw your track plan. That's number one. And then you'll sort of work out, okay, I want to run it this way, so I'm gonna need this amount of blocks. So with that amount of blocks you buy whatever detection units, whether it's Digitrax, Roco or whatever else in between. Um, because obviously train controller supports a lot of protocols which is really really good um i don't think there's too many on there that the average modeler would would not know of that that can't be can't be used with this with this system and then obviously then you've got to add um stationary decoders to your turnouts or switches and that that light so you can then you sort of just build it as your sort of confidence grows and your knowledge of the, the program grows um so does its operations for that makes sense so it's quite modular in regards to that so and and you know it's it's funny but what i'm hearing from other people it's not just operating the train no. you're operating the sig you can operate signals a, a total complete signal system exactly as the real railroads operated you can uh, you can have uh, if you have a city or a, a town with buildings and so forth yeah. you can have different lights in different buildings come on come on yeah. go off and so yeah. forth you can do all of these kind of things, uh, and it's all the same program. It's all the same uh, wiring. I mean, you're not doing anything else. And after a while, it it just involves, seems to me at least, uh, sitting down and figuring out what you want to achieve, and then Correct. putting in the commands into the program that you've already got on your computer to make that happen the way that you want it to happen. And it, you know, this is. Uh, this is something that I think the achievement program is going to have to get more involved with. Yeah, I think uh, I you know, the reason the reason that I found out anything about this is I had an Australian modeler yep. send me an email and say, uh, "How much do you know about computerized model railroading?" Sure. And I wrote back and I said, absolutely nothing. Yeah. And he said, well, I don't think that you deserve the MMR if you don't know about computerized model railroading. Yeah. Well, yeah. now that I have spent a little time and talked to a lot of people by email or, or Zoom or whatever, sure. uh, I can understand exactly what he's saying. Yeah. Because yeah. I, you know, I, I, I think that it may be the future for an awful lot of modelers, and I think it's an area that uh, the more people like yourself that, that are looking at becoming members of the NMRA, if you get involved in it and start bringing this technology sure. to the to the sure. forefront, yep. Uh, yep. I, you know, I, it's it just, uh, until he sent me that email, I had never thought about computerized model yeah. railroad. I'm assuming you're talking about Peter. Yes, I am. Yeah, so he's... um. We, he runs his railway very similar to what I run mine, so I sort of picked up him on Facebook. So we're always, always chatting. I've yet to meet the gentleman. He lives quite, quite a distance from me in New South Wales. But, um, so yeah, it's very interesting you you bring that out. I'm sort of looking at, and I'll just bring it up quickly so people can actually see, um, sort of the the master model. Is it sort of does talk about electrical side of things, but it's. I think it needs to, as you say, it needs to move forward. It's a lot of more DC DC wiring by the looks of it. There doesn't seem to be that I can see, and please tell me if I'm wrong here, um, the DCC component or um, obviously it talks about uh, centralised traffic control systems, um, which is obviously a lot more, mo lot more complicated, but um, I think DCC and definitely computer-aided dispatch or computer... 
um, like train control type programs that that are out there. So needs to be needs to be added, I think. So into that that electrical system or even a, a new category of software or something. I don't know. So that's. I, I don't know either. I, I don't know because again, when I got mine, I haven't looked at the regulations in years. Yeah. Uh, but when I got mine, you know, I just, you know, I, I, I still run straight DC. Sure. My control, sure. my controllers are homemade. I make them myself. Yeah. Uh, I got, uh, I got two controllers, one for each hand. Yeah. Uh, it's got a diode uh, going in opposite directions in each one of them. Sure. And World War, and World War Two rheostats that control yeah. the speed level. Yeah. And a, an on-off switch. Now yeah. that's my controller, and I've got two of those. Sure. You're hooked sure. up uh, using telephone line wire. Yeah. Uh, and you know I can run two trolleys at a time. That's it. But you know I'm by myself basically. Yeah. yeah. As where I live, there's just not that many trolley modelers that that yeah. are around. And I don't have an extensive railroad. Uh, I, you know, it's it's a reasonably small trolley railroad that I enjoy. You know, if that's just my my hobby. Sure. There's no reason for me to go further than that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, I don't. I've just never paid much attention to sure uh, much beside the basic electrical uh, connections yeah, that yeah. I need. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite interesting. It's just another arm of the hobby. Hobbies that some are into building prototypical scratch built brass. I'm, Absolutely. I'm somewhere else. I'm, I'm into the the computer side of things, and you, you're exactly right. There's a, and I'll I'll put it in a link below. There's a how I actually got into train controller was via a YouTube channel by a gentleman by the name of Vikas Chandra, who lives in India, mm. and he's a, a European model like myself. Hence why his videos were put in front of me on YouTube, effectively. Um, the automation this man has done on his layout is mind blowing. So, so much so he has got his layout lighting controlled via train control software. He has mm -hmm. got, he simulates storms coming in. So he's got smoke machines that um, link in with, so he's really gone fourth dimension here. Um, yeah, he's got the set up this smoke machine, like a, what would you call it? Um, like a theatre, theatre type smoke machine that he's set up that all runs on 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 a on a, a timer, so to speak, and he's set up strobe lights that set off it, and it looks like um, like lightning and thunder and coming in, and he changes the the aspects of the lighting, and it's just what this man does. <laughs> it's phenomenal what he what what this gentleman has done. It's just it's just next level. Um, of realism for that fourth dimension where he's not just looking purely trains or track or buildings, he's looking at weather. Um, obviously then with that he's got different aspects regarding his, what would you call it, so from light to day and everything in between, so dawn and dawn and dusk. So um, so there was a, a gentleman, it was a freeware, and I, I do have one. So the protocol that they used to use in theatres was a, a protocol called DMX, which is like how they faded in their lights in and out, and each light had a channel, and they could sort of control the lights quite manually. So this clever German chap made a a decoder where I can, and I, I've yet to play with it myself, but I did buy one, um, where I can plug DMX into... DCC, so it was a, an interface, so I could plug my train controller in to control these studio lights or these theatre lights, um, so to speak. So, um, don't think I'm sort of at that stage to to get into that right now. Um, I still want to finish my railway off first, but that's the sky's a limit with some of this this stuff when it comes to the electrical side of things. Um, well, a, and, and you also have all of the sound that you can you correct. can also bring into it. Correct. Not just the locomotive sound, no. but 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 things like a blacksmith shop, like yep. the inside of a saloon, like the inside of a, a business, whatever. Yep. Horns talking, cars, correct. that kind of thing. Correct. And he's got. I the, saw, sorry, go. On. And, and I think too, you can also control your vehicles. Automobiles, yep. farm tractors. Yep. Uh, yep. If you can believe it, there's no, 
you know, when you stop and think about it, I, I saw a model railroad on, on my Zoom the other night, my Zoom meeting the other night, where the, the, the club that, that was showing their model railroad had installed a bicycle chain yep. uh, behind a, an area of their model railroad. You couldn't see the bicycle chain. All you saw was the, the scale automobiles and trucks going by, yep. pulled by that bicycle chain. Sure. No magnets or anything. Yeah. It was all just off the bicycle chain, yeah, yeah. and it was uh, it was really something to see that that not just the trains were moving and going through the the uh, the scenery, but but uh, think about the vehicles that you could have going through the yeah. farm tractor on the farm going plowing the fields, you know it's just whatever your imagination is it seems to me this software capability uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. can bring it help bring it to life for yeah. you. So basically, if you're liking it the software if if you can turn it on with a toggle switch you can control it with the computer effectively so yeah yep. sky's the limit yeah you can do cars lighting this gentleman has also got obviously sound and like a subwoofer so when the the strobe fires off it fires a clap of thunder as well that's sitting underneath a, a subwoofer speaker underneath his his layer he's obviously got a whole audio system um set up in there as well it's just phenomenal I'll, I'll send you the link you'd, you'd, if you're into that type it's quite quite interesting and very you have a, you have an email if you could send me his email too darren that would be great because yeah. i'll try to include him in the article i yeah. haven't heard about him before no. um i'm trying to get him on it as an interview myself another gentleman that i did a a series with um called uh gustav chatterjee he's also an indian um chap um, phenomenal mm -hmm. scratch building as well, um, American in in scale. Right. So they're 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 friends. So I can probably get that for you. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, it, it's uh, it's amazing to me what can be accomplished. Uh, I, I just uh, I, I can't believe what some of the people around are doing about it that yeah. that you don't hear about. You know, yeah. it's it's yeah. it's when I when I post it on my Facebook page and ask people. Are you are you, who's involved in computerized model railroading? I got a lot of comments back about uh, the code uh, JMRI. I think it is. Yeah. You, you may be familiar with it. Yeah, I am. Yeah, uh, uh, and that's what a lot of the people are. You know, they're they're writing their own, or they're yeah. trying to write yeah. their own. You yeah. know, and they're yeah. uh, doing one small thing here, one small thing here. And when I I called one of them up the other night, and I said, uh, let me paint you a picture and I went through the same scenario about uh, climbing the mountain the train sure and he said the only thing that I can say is wow Jim he said uh, that this would take me forever he said this is just unbelievable if somebody has accomplished that yeah and and Darren you've used the software that yeah. you know I'm talking about definitely uh, it's it's off the shelf software I mean you can buy it today correct yep you definitely can it's very easy to download so um, I've, yeah, I've got some a short video series. I think about half a dozen videos on on this the channel, um, how to uh -huh. use it and how to download it and its basic functions, right the way through to more intermediate. I'm not going to say masterclass stuff because I'm I'm nowhere near that. I do work with a gentleman out of Germany that I would put in the masterclass category. Right, right. Um, however, he's a, a very personal type man so i don't mention his names or anything um on any of my on my stuff but he, he does know that i do appreciate his work for me but the one of the beauties of train controller is and we sort of digress here a little bit but it's, it's great dialogue going on between us here that's great um so if you jim were to have train control software yourself and you wanted mm -hmm. some help with the because you still there still is an amount of code you put into it, and I won't sort of delve in too deeply because it's probably best to show visually. Um, you could send me just no different from sending a word document or something similar. You could send it to me. I can look at that on my program, help you with the code, design the code, put it into your program, and resave it and send it back to you for you to use on your railroad. See, if, if that was known, you know, I'd, I'd like to talk about that in the article. I'm profiling yeah. you, as you yeah. know, in the article. Please do. 
Yeah. I'd like to be able yeah. to talk about that, and, and, and if you want to offer that as a service, then I'll write that up and put it in the article. Yep, oh, uh, that's, yeah. that's where what because is. Because, see, that, that's the kind of thing that people like me, who are not computer literate, who wouldn't know how to do this at all. I mean, I barely got on Skype tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, yeah. if I if I had somebody, regardless of where they're located, it doesn't make any difference to me. You know, if I can send this in an email and say, hey, Darren, can you fix this for me? This is what I'm trying to do here. Yeah. And then you can fix it and send it back to me and I can put it in my computer and it works. Definitely. I'm home free. You yeah. know, that that to me, that 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 would get me started. You know, yeah. I could say, OK, fine, let me give this a shot. Yep. So I take my old computer, instead of throwing it away, I take it out to my train room and I plug it in the wall out there and buy this software and put the software in my computer and, and know that Darren is going to help me get it up and running. Yep. Hell, I'm home free. That's definitely something that I'm looking at doing to help people out in that way because I'm a very big proponent of giving back to the hobby. I've taken a lot from different people. Um, what I would call mentors in my life, and I think it's my responsibility to to give back, so to speak. So, yeah, I'm more than happy to do it, something like that. So I've been working with this gentleman for probably the last four years, not so much of probably the last 12 months. Um, I've been sort of concentrating on trying to get the layout finished. But it's just, it's it's also got a lovely little feature called um, called the simulator. So... I can sort of run your layout in a in a simulator mode to very similar how it would interact with your real layout at home, so to speak. So, so it just talks about how what the decoders from what what track the train from various areas around the layout, and it'll show me where there might be issues. So, it's not. Yeah, there I, think, a, I think. Uh, there's a potential for that, I, I guarantee you, because then you can tell me, uh, Jim, this is the this is the other equipment that you need to buy in order for this to happen, this to happen, this to happen. So then I'm getting, you know, that would be real value for me, yep. because what terrifies a lot of people that I talk to is they're like me. You know, there's no point in me buying a computer program because I probably can't get it operating. Yep. It's it's like pe it's like people paying five hundred dollars for a Craftsman kit. Yeah. And getting yeah. opening the box and seeing all of these pieces of wood and plastic and, and metal parts and so forth sure. and saying, oh, my God, how do you build this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then close it, closing the box and put putting it in the top yeah. of their closet, never to be seen again. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's definitely something we can, you can I and I can talk about more later, that's for sure. Because um, with this with this software, um, train control, I'm not sure about JMRI, there's iTrain and there's a few other softwares out there that have this capability. Um, I'm not all that okay with them, but I know definitely train controller. You can send it here anywhere in the world, and someone can work on your your, your layout file effectively and get well. I can get it to work. But you know, if you if you if you start talking about the code, if you start talking about the technical things, if you start talking about well, you need to get this decoder, that this, blah blah blah. People's eyes glaze over. Yeah, they they just don't yeah. understand it. They they don't relate to it. Now, younger people, yeah, they probably relate to it and know exactly what you're talking about. Sure. But sure. people, people, I hate to say this, people in their late 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, yeah. their eyes glaze over. You know, yeah. it's, it's hard enough getting a model railroad to run with DCC controller, yeah. let alone yeah. computerized. My God, what is he talking about? Yeah, yeah. No, that's, yeah, it's definitely a, a beauty of, of this software. I can't speak highly enough of it. Um, I understand. Yeah, because it serves it serves my my being able to have a lack of people effectively. It's how I achieve to have a big a running operating layout with very few people. So well, you know, you you mentioned that there aren't a lot of model railroaders around where you are. Yeah, but the kind of thing that 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 I'm talking to you about now, that kind of a service. You might be surprised at the number of people who might want to get involved in model railroading that are all over the world. Sure. That all sure. of a sudden are, are right there at your next door, right next door to you through Zoom or through Skype or, yes. or through whatever yeah. system you're using. Uh, because I'm, I'm telling you, 
the, the world's getting smaller every day. It is, isn't and, it? Yeah. And you're, and we don't have to travel like we used to to uh, to get the information that we desperately need. No, that's that's exactly right. So no, that's definitely something when we when we meet up in that Zoom call. Um, yeah. We can we can talk about more. We can talk about before that as well if that's what you're interested in. We doesn't have to be anything formal like this where we're recording. It's just a chat between be great. two sure. like-minded people. Yeah, definitely. So. Sure. Um, the next question was to get into DCC, but I think we've got into DCC and delved reasonably deep, I think, uh, particularly with train controller and the like. And it's very interesting that you've taken an interest in train controller when you when you run a DC system. So obviously that's quite resounding to me that a gentleman as yourself is delving and, oh, okay, there, there, there's something here that we need to, to investigate. So that's hence why I'm jumping on board with your channel as well to, to further this message. Well, you know, when, when I got the email originally uh, from your friend in, in Australia, you know, I, I the, the way I'm starting my article is imagine this, and then I go through two or three examples of, of people that I know are operating their railroads a certain way through this program. And I thought to myself, well, why, why would I be interested? If, if no one else is writing about this, if no one else is talking about this, who cares? Yeah. Well, then, then I started thinking to myself, Here's a piece of software that's been around for since 1995. First yeah. volume came out, I understand. Sure. And I think it's in its ninth or tenth or something like that uh, version right yeah. now. Number nine, yeah. So if it's if it's tested to that extent, and it's still marketed, and the company is still in existing in existence and still selling it, and people are still buying it, uh, museums are buying it, and so forth. My gosh, what is this all about, and how come I've never heard of it? That's why I got interested in it, just as simple as that. Sure. Now, yeah, it's quite interesting you bring it up. I was on a a podcast with a, an ex Australian expat called Model Rail Radio with Tom Barbalay, who's out of San Francisco. It's basically a Skype bring in, and he just asks you questions about your layouts and all that, and I got onto him through some Australian modelers that are quite friendly with him within South Australia here. And mm. he did pose that question to me because he, he asked about train controller, and he, the direct question was, why do you think train controller wasn't all that as predominant in the United States? And... Yeah, it was quite an interesting sort of conversation. Um, I personally think that whether it's, we talked about people in their, not lack of computer skills is probably one of a better phrase, but, you know, it is a, a very unique, very niche type of software um, that's niching right down with it within a smaller niche of DCC. But... Um, yeah, it's still, I, I, I can't answer the question, and I couldn't to him to a certain degree either, why something like this wouldn't be taken up. It's 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 probably got a lot to do with marketing as well. A lot of people probably just don't know it exists. Um, I think that, I think that's true. I mean, I don't think the, uh, the NMRA has done a particularly great job in promoting their, uh, I think it's their LCC, uh, that, that it would be maybe the equivalent of this at some point. Yeah. Yeah, I... I, I've seen articles in their magazine that they put out, their monthly magazine, and uh, I just skip through them. I, I don't even read them because it has no interest to me. Sure. Because sure. If, if I if I went down that road by myself, it would take me years probably to get to any kind of a proficiency level, and I'm you know I'm just not interested in spending my time that way. Yeah. That's now. Fair if, if they came out and they said, here it is off the shelf, uh, and all you got to do is find somebody that, that you can email back and forth to, yeah. and here's, uh, here's people that have their uh, whatever the designation is that they might decide to give it, yeah. uh, and I could email them or you or, or somebody that yeah. I had confidence in to walk me through it step by step, then that's a different story. Yep. But those days, that's not here. Now, the software that, that we're talking about, uh, I understand that there is a certain capability that, that comes with that software, yep. uh, that, you know, from people like that. But what I'm talking about is having somebody that I can build some kind of a rapport with. 
yeah. that in effect can be my mentor in this. Yeah. When you mentioned yeah. mentor the other day, uh, Darren, that's why I write the articles. That's why I, that's why I call them new tracks. Yeah. Because yeah. my main concern is if the people that have the skills today are not mentoring the new people and the people that don't have those skills, yeah, yeah. then we're going to lose those skills. And five, ten years down the road, the skills and the modeling capability that exists today out there, and some of it is just, I mean, it is so great. Yeah. Yeah. If, if we lose those people, and we will, I mean, they will die, yeah. uh, and that information hasn't been communicated and passed on to other modelers, then that, that, that knowledge base is what I'm concerned in, it, we're losing. So yeah. all of my yeah. articles are, I'd like to see more people building models, and I'd like to see more po people that have the talent become mentors to people that need to learn those things. Yeah, I agree. And I agree. Uh, that, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, that's a good thing you do. Um, as I said before, it's we need to do that in our various niche strengths, I suppose. Um, obviously, mine is the computing and the running side of things in this program. As I said, I'm no masterclass sort of standard but i have a, a reasonable overview on how it works and how to find the information if people want to do things that are a bit more technical i suppose but um so yeah I, I was, that was my sort of my next logical question is why i call it the biggie question is if you were if you're on the board of directors with the nmra where, where would you like to see the the organization going we saw i suppose we've sort of touched on that a little bit um regarding the dcc side of things but where do you think that that the organisation could go or needs to go for the betterment of the, the young modeler? I have I, I have no idea. Yeah. I I did, I don't really give that thought. Tell you yeah. the truth, because yeah. I I think I think they've got the basic educational program and component. I think oh. it's wonderful. Uh, yeah, does it need to be tweeted? Yeah. Do we need to bring in Zoom for the model judging? Yes. Do we need to get more computerization involved in that program? Yes. Yeah. Does it need to be easier for modelers, particularly new modelers, to learn about and to sure. be able to get help uh, to get through the the learning curve of, of whatever it is, whether it's building a structure, whether it's computerization, whatever it is, the yeah. learning curve is where the mentoring is critical. Definitely. Uh, it's either you either get the mentoring or it's trial and error. And as you know, trying to do trial and error off a new computer program that and you're not that computer savvy in the first place is to me that would be so frustrating. Sure. That that's why sure. that's why I've never gotten involved with uh, uh, 3D printing because yeah. I don't know how to do the CAD part of it. Yeah. Uh, um, pressing pressing the button and getting the printing done, I think I could handle that. Uh, it's the CAD program sure. to get the part to where it needs to be printed that I can't handle. Yeah. So yeah. I've got to get somebody to do that. Otherwise, 3D printing is not possible for me. Sure. Uh, and, and it's the same with uh, the, uh, the the cutting out of the uh, either the card uh, buildings and, and so forth electronically or or using wood to cut them out. I, you know, I couldn't master that because I don't know the software well enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. not interested in that part of the hobby. Sure. So I don't, I scratch build. And yeah. that's, uh, it, it's the old, old way of doing it. And, yeah. and I really enjoy it. Yeah. And that's, I suppose that's the beauty of this hobby, isn't it? You can be a carpenter, electrician, a builder, civil engineer, you know, that's just Take a name four. And that's, that's the beauty of this hobby. You know, you and I can have this conversation half right across the world and you're into scratch building, I'm into computer and we can still have a, a, a conversation that's gone on for over an hour and I'm sure we could go on a, a hell of a lot longer. So yeah, um, absolutely. that's the beauty of this hobby, I think, and that's probably why I think it's the best hobby in the world. I couldn't agree more. I think we just need to have it exposed and... Uh, I, I think the Zoom capability needs to be uh, a major part of it. Yep. I think the new uh, X programs that NMRA is coming out with over the internet. I think sure. that's sure. going to be a major part of it. Regardless, of, you know, we can, you know, we'll get by this virus, I'm sure. Yep. But regardless of that, I think this is the future. Sure, I agree. I agree. 
definitely. So I think what we'll do now, if you're happy, um, you've sent some some phenomenal photos of some of your modelling um, that you've done, obviously over over a lifetime. So what we'll yep. do, we'll just like talk us through what the model sure. is and sort of just a brief synopsis of how you built it and where that's the prototype's that's, from. Yeah. That's a scratch built uh, brass. Beautiful. It's a uh, trolley uh, up in uh, New Hampshire yep. and uh, it's a combine. So I, I had some pictures and I had a, a plan drawing that I got from somebody sent it to me and I thought, Hey, that's going to be a neat model. So I said, well, I, I can build that. The hardest part of it was maybe getting the roof right. Yeah. Because the roof yeah. has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts to it. Yeah. So getting all of those pieced together and beat out and so forth, that was probably the hardest part. The rest of it is uh, a box with a floor in it, and the, the interior is all detailed. The interior yeah. of my trolleys, I try to detail. It's, it's got uh, underbody uh, power units that uh, don't come up through the floor. So oh, okay. Well, <laughs> What I do, I use uh, cigar wood, cedar cigar wood, wrappers, and that kind of thing to build the uh, interior walls. Right. And uh, so they, they look, you know, when I stain them and everything, they look like real wood walls in, inside. Put wow. uh, some seats yeah. in, put people in and so forth, or put uh, in the uh, uh, bag, in the uh, uh, freight area, put uh, yeah. boxes, that can, drums, that kind of thing. So it's all in detailed on the inside, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to get it finished. I had my first 3D project was the lamps for the uh, passenger compartment of it right. on the inside. So uh, I had a person in India uh, design the lamps for me up based on a photo of, of the interior of a, of a trolley lamp. Sure. And uh, then I had Shapeways uh, print them out for me. Oh, I love and, that's, that was my first experience with 3D printing. Oh, lovely. All right, so next one is a this is, uh, sem semi-trailer. This is, yep, and the, uh, the, the, trailer, uh, the trailer part is card stock. It's just a card, and there's a company uh, called Team Tracks yep. that uh, produces uh, models of uh, tra tractors and everything, the tires, everything. It's just card, yep. paper and card. And uh, it builds into a nice model. Yeah, it's not difficult. Is. For a lot of people that are worried about uh, learning to build and so forth, trying to start in card, I think, may be a good idea because you print it off your home computer. Sure. Uh, sure. And so your total cost is your uh, printer cost. Yeah. And uh, an X-Acto knife and some uh, glue and uh, a straight, a straight uh, uh, measure. Uh, you know, you're in business. A yeah. scale ruler, you're in business. And it's, a, it's probably the cheapest way to have tool-wise to get involved in, in scratch building. Yeah, and like I say, there, there's an awful lot of different companies. One of them is uh, Cliver that uh, makes all different kind of structures and everything that you can download and, yeah. and buy from them. And uh, if you look at their site and so forth, uh, around on the internet you'll find a lot of companies that offer card uh, structures and cars and trucks and all that kind of thing sure. and uh, it, they build into nice models yeah uh, and it's super cheap and what what scale is that because that's some um, 12 nearly 12 inches long that's it scale okay. it's s scale yeah oh that's lovely and obviously with uh you zoom's uh, little uh, logo there which is a, a lovely little uh Absolutely, and and the, the, uh, the well, the person that uh, the company uh, designed that and offered that uh, as a freebie for uh, when I did the uh, profile of their company because I, I profiled them and I said, yep. well, can you do one of my logo? And he said, sure, I'll do that. Yeah, oh, lovely, excellent. Yes. So these are yeah these when you sent me these a, I these are really lovely. So that's a scratch built uh, Bugatti 1931, yeah. I believe. And uh, it's all brass. Oh. Uh, the tires are the only thing that aren't brass. The tires are card. Wow. They're layered card. Layered cardboard. Okay. Yep. And everything else is uh, brass in it. And obviously the the wheels they sort of printed or they sort of they drawn in yep. by hand or yep all printed in. Nope, nope. They're printed. There's a company that makes a uh, 1933 Packard. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the wheels that I used were off of the model that he had, uh, that, that I had uh, printed off. And I thought, well, geez, that's great. So I printed the basic uh, wheels off of it for the exterior of it. And then, then from there on, all I did was cut circles out of uh, cardstock, glued them together, and that makes the wheel. You paint the tread black, and uh, hello, you've got a wheel. I put uh, straight pins through uh, the, uh, the cardstock. And I've got a. They go into a, a, a piece of uh, uh, sure. brass uh, sure. tube. Oh, lovely! They are a phenomenal looking model. Well, it's oh. something that you won't see on many model railroads no, around. That's right. I have a few similar in HO, but I don't have the skill to build them. That's for sure. So I bought them at great <laughs> and <that's> expense. A... <laughs> probably that one's okay. scary. Yeah, probably nearly $25 just to, to buy a HA one, but they are beautiful models. So this is a, yeah, talk us through this little, I'm assuming like a little shunter or something similar. It's, it's Yeah, that's one of the, that's a little critter. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it's brass. Yeah. Uh, it's brass parts from a, a guy in uh, uh, the Netherlands, I believe, uh, oh. offered them probably 30 years ago. And I'm not sure even if he's, you know, still around over there. But I got a, I got a set of his uh, brass etchings, and I thought, well, yeah, it's going to be pretty cute. So I've got two uh, Northwest Short Line Magic Carpet motors under it yeah. that provide the power, and it's amazing how much it'll pull. Yeah. And then I put a trolley pole on it because I, I only run trolleys, so right. okay. I put a trolley pole on the top, and I justify the trolley pole by saying, yeah. well, that controls my signals. Right. <laughs> That's. I'm just out of interest on a bit side issue. Um, do you hand lay your track, or is that? Um... Yeah, that, that's not hand laid. I normally do. Yeah. But I was uh, I was busy to get into operation here, so yeah. I found some great track in O scale yeah. and painted it up and so forth, and just dropped it in. That's a lovely profile, that's for sure. Okay, what else we got here? Right, I'm just yeah. I've, some that's these... a little, uh, that, that's an uh, old plantation area that's out in the country yeah. that uh, there's a reason that people go from the city out in the country on the weekend, and part of it is to view the old plantation right. with okay. the, uh, the ladies and so forth, and sure. the little uh, tram uh, out front yeah. is scratch-built brass. Lovely. Uh, yeah. Off of a couple of pictures that I found on the internet of uh, yeah. trams in uh, in uh, England. And the, the the structure here is scratch built as well, I assume. But, yep, scratch built out of basswood. Basswood. Uh, board, yep. Yep, and uh, then the windows, the window treatment. I just uh, I build little boxes on the inside for of each yeah. window. Sure. And uh, so. then put uh, photos and so forth inside the boxes, yeah. and as you look into the window. Yep. Then you'll see the uh, interior. Wow. It's another little uh, car. It's scratch yep. built in brass. Tires, you notice, are the same yep. Uh, yep. because it's the same uh, exterior, and then they're just uh, yep. laid up with uh, uh, cardstock. Yeah. The uh, the headlights are, are uh, dowels that uh, I've, I've shaped to, to have yep. the headlights. Sure. And the rest of it is just built in brass. Lovely. Just uh, five. It's built in five thousandths brass. Right. It's bent and shaped. Lovely. So they feature on your layout, or they just something that features. Oh on yeah. The oh, I run. Yeah, I probably yeah. got. I probably have ten of them that I built. The various yeah. models that I built so far. Right yeah. now, I'm building a 1933 Packard uh, Woody, oh, like and that. I'm using. Uh, it's going to have uh, the wood sides and so forth on it. Yeah. And uh, it's going to it's going to be a little different. Yeah, lovely. All right, this is a, a fantastic little, uh, I'm a, a Western scene, I, I suppose, the one of a better phrase. Yeah, I had, you know, I just, I build what I like. Yeah. And uh, this is, uh, if you think of Williamsburg, Virginia, and the old recreations that they have there, yeah. this is a recreation, yeah. I guess, of a Western scene. Yeah. All of it is scratch built. Uh, yeah. Well, the animals are not naturally, but uh, the people, the animals aren't, but all the structures are scratch built. Yeah, uh, and just uh, yeah, I, I enjoy doing that kind of thing. Yeah, lovely. How have you constructed these these trees in the foreground? 
they're uh, dowels with uh, yeah. just pieces of uh, fern, oh, uh, drilled okay. holes, and yeah. stick the fern here and there and so forth. And yeah, oh, lovely. That's a that's a really nice effect. Yeah, something a little different, and, yeah. and the controls are, are sounds within the uh, the, uh, the structures, and then a couple right. of controls uh, control switches uh, further around. Okay. All right, so here's more of these little. Uh, these little found shanks. this from a friend. Yep, found this from a friend in Australia. Yeah, he it. has a, he models sugar plantation, sugar oh, cane. I see. Yep. And this uh, the little critter in the uh, that's painted is a card model, oh. and uh, got it off of his internet site. Right. And I thought, well, geez, that hey, that came out pretty good. That kind of a cute model. Let me see if I can build that in, in brass. brass. And the one on the <laughs> left. That's the same model using his design uh, yeah. that I built in brass. And you do you solder the brass? Is that how you? Oh yeah, you join? yeah, yeah. Just Absolutely. a normal solder, just a normal soldering of low, low. Metal. I use it. Uh, no, I use sixty forty uh, uh, rosin core solder. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know that's no problem. And then if I have problems, gaps I need to fill and so forth, then I'll use uh, fifty fifty solder. They used to call it body putty. Right. Uh, but it's, it's basically 50-50 solder, rosin core right. solder. Okay. My wife uh, wanted, uh, uh, I call it a greenhouse. Yeah. Uh, but she wanted uh, this kind of a structure, an emporium yeah. kind of thing uh, that she calls a conservatory. Yes. So I yes. went to uh, the Internet, and I found various conservatories in England. Yeah. And I finally said, well, let me take a bit of this and a bit of that. And that is the conservatory. It's Lovely. built in brass, yeah. built in brass yeah. and pe plexiglass. Wow. And uh, it's detailed on the inside. A lot of the detailing of uh, scenery stuff comes from uh, Scenic Express Company. Sure. Uh, the little uh, 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 organ that, uh, that sits outside of it. I have a sound unit for that that plays yeah. the music. Oh, and uh, okay. it's it's just uh, some brass soldered together and some decals put on the outside. Oh, lovely. Now a little uh, stagecoach in brass, is it or? No, this right. is a nineteen. This is an eighteen thirties yeah. horse drawn trolley from oh, Wales, okay. England. Right. Okay. And uh, a guy by the name of Tony Cook in uh, England yeah. is one of the most fantastic trolley modelers I've ever seen yeah. and uh, he posted some uh, he posted a picture of one that he had built in a larger scale this one's O scale yeah. and one that he built was uh, in 124th scale I believe sure. and sure. I thought geez that really is cute so I sent him an email and I said Tony you got any prototype pictures of it he sent me some of those and he said uh, here's some basic dimensions he sent me those and I scaled from the photographs using his dimensions and Sure. That's what it came out to be. So that oh, is lovely. a Wales nineteen uh, eighteen thirty horse drawn trolley. Yeah, <coughs> we have a, a very similar trolley to that in a, a tourist location here in South Australia, in Victor Harbour, which it's not currently being used right now, obviously. But um, it goes across to a across a body of water, across a quite a large jetty area that gets pulled by three or four Clydesdales on rails. Yep. So. Yep. Because um, obviously that the heritage of that area was, my understanding, one of the first in the British Empire anyway, first railways to be horse drawn like that. Um, so, yeah, that's very similar to to that uh, to that to that vehicle that we've but, got here. But but again, you know, I I saw it, I liked it, I built. Yeah. Why not? It's beautiful. Yep. All right. So that's just an overview of the conservatory and the. The, the church see a little, yeah yeah see the, see the little church yeah that's card that oh, is wow. card it's uh from a company uh where is that company um uh, i can't can't remember right now that's um right. it's not poland i but it's one of it, it's company over country over there uh, and it, there, he had printed he had published it on his uh um uh, internet site and i thought geez that's a cute little church and it's yeah, small it's... small enough and different yeah. enough you yeah. know i'll just swap it in there start it in yeah. there and so Sounds i built good. it and there it is beautiful beautiful 
more vehicles. Obviously, a very a passion of yours. So yeah, that's a Packard, old Packard, 1930s Packard. Same tires, same yep. build, same way. Lovely. The Louis Vuitton uh, trunk on the back of it. I did see that Louis Vuitton card stock there. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The rest of it's all brass. Oh, lovely. Another overview of uh, the, the trolley and some. No, pits. this is kite. This is the kite flyers. The kite flyers. If you yep. look there, if you look very carefully, you'll see. I think there's four different kites. Yep. And I yeah, was looking yeah. for. I was yes. looking to yes. try to figure out a recreation area out in the country. And so I, I had thought, well, you know, there's going to be kite flyers. So let me see yeah. if I can build some kites. So I got uh, four figures and built some different kind of kites and wired them up. And, and they're oh, yeah. flying over the farmer's field until I can figure a different place for them. <laughs> the, yeah, uh, the little building little building on the, uh, the right side is a uh, pigeon house, a oh, French okay. pigeon house. Okay. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love those kite flies. That's that gives me a good idea for mine because my kids love flying the kites. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it's something different, something you may not see a lot no. on different railroads. But no, definitely not. All right. Uh, this is an airplane. So I posted on my uh, my Facebook page. I said, "What's that airplane doing up there with the propeller not moving?" Yeah, okay. And, and I, I got, and, and if you'll see down in the lower part of it on the right side, the big gun, that oh, yeah. would be yeah. one of the big guns that were on uh, battleships and oh, yes, on, the, yes, yes. on the West Coast during the Second World War for defense. And it's hauled, as you'll notice, uh, by a trolley. There was a company that made the big guns that used to move them around their manufacturing facility by trolleys. Oh, okay. And, uh, I found pictures of the trolley and built the trolley, and that's the big sure. gun that was on it. So when I posted this picture, I got uh, comments back, and I found a, a company called Prop Blur uh, that makes a that makes a, a product that if you put it on the uh, the model, yeah. it makes it appear that the model that the propeller is actually moving. in flight. Right. Do I have a photo of that? Yeah, I think oh, you do. You do. There it is. There. Yep. No, that's no, no. Right, that's that's not it. it. Uh, different plane again. There it is. There it is. Yeah. There's there one. See the propeller moving. Yeah. That was my. Some people said, "Well, what you need to do is put a piece of plastic on the plane, on the yep. front of it, and it'll make it appear." Well, that's how it looks if you put a plastic piece of plastic on it. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's nice. All right. So we'll we'll go back here a few. We won't. All right, this is an interest ring me. I always like what people are on people's workbenches. So we might uh, call this maybe the last one we'll talk about. Um, All we're, right. We're nearly ticking over an hour and a half. Would you believe that? Yeah, it goes <laughs> fast when you're having fun. Yeah, even that's, with that's uh, a I little five-minute uh, in um, <laughs> pause at the beginning. So so talk me through your, your workbench. I. That's about that's about as clean as it gets. Yeah. The uh, piece of equipment on the uh, the left side on the bench yeah. is an air purifier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that I turn that on and it keeps the dust down in the yeah. shop and also uh, uh, it supposedly purifies the air. Yeah. I've got, got a. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And uh, that's about as as clean as it gets. On the the right side, you'll see a, a electrical uh, tester. Uh, that's an old piece of uh, Lionel equipment right. uh, that was sold to uh, to test Lionel trains and so forth. And oh, wow. I use it. I use it to uh, test all the DC and continuity circuits and that kind of thing. Yeah. The uh, you'll see my soldering uh, unit that I use uh, to the right there on the bench. That's about as clean as it gets. Oh, I, yeah. You know, I I don't take up a lot of space. It just yeah. uh, got a lot of junk. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say it's junk. It's. Uh, I think it's funny. I always, it's, I always like asking people about their benches. And if you saw mine lot right now, I'm building a, a craftsman kit by a Carolina Craftsman Kit for a, 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 a harbour scene that I'm I'm doing on my layout. And it's filthy mess. But then I'll clean it up, and then it'll be filthy mess. So um, always absolutely like, always love to see the because uh, if it's if it's too tidy, it means you're not doing any work on it. It's the way I look at it. So absolutely. absolutely. So we might. Um, 
we'll call that uh, where are we? So we'll just quickly go to your your Facebook site. So obviously we can reach out on Facebook. Um, the big one here is we'll quickly go. We won't start it, but obviously your Zoom meeting. So when, when Jim, when's your next Zoom meeting uh, coming? Wednesday up? night. Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. Yeah. So obviously, uh, if you so it becomes. I have them uh, every Wednesday, every Saturday, seven o'clock uh, Eastern uh, Standard Time. Yep. And uh, they they run a good hour and a half, two hours, something like that. We'll have yeah. a featured modeler each time. And uh, then, you know, whatever the other guys want to talk about is, is fine. And it's a, it's really a give and take like we're having tonight. Although yeah, anybody that anybody that wants to log into it can find the link on my Facebook page. Yep. And I've got an email that I don't mind giving out that, uh, yep. that, that you can include yep. if you want to. It's yep. jimkello yep. at oscaleresource.com. Yep. yep. Okay. I'll, um, I'll put that in the description below, definitely. So <laughs> to reach out if they've got any um love to hear from them and and uh, any special I write a, or... well i you know i'm working on another uh, article about australian modeling uh, so you know if you if you're a model railroader in australia and i haven't written about you yet yep. and you uh, you're a model builder uh, give me a send me an email and and let's talk yeah now that definitely definitely that's how you and i i think you and i you reached out a little while ago, and I do apologise. I was a little bit slack until sort of Peter asked me, "Had uh, has Jim Kello got in contact with you?" And I said, "I do know that name." So I've gone back through, and I've realised that I didn't, re I hadn't responded to you. So I do apologise for that, and quickly righted my That's wrong. But, um, so yeah, I'm, see, I'm I'm good at that. I get a lot of the referrals. Yeah. But if I send it to the person that's been referred to me and I don't hear from them immediately, then I'll go back to the people that made the referral and say, hey, have you talked to so-and-so? He yeah, won't yeah. answer my email. Yeah. No, I definitely have now, so apologies for that. So, so you, you might find my modeling a little bit unique purely because I am I live in Australia. I'm a European modeler that will run the Australian prototype with predominantly European scenery but I'm building American Craftsman kits. So that's a very mishmash of a, a lot going on there. But I'm a bit like yourself, Jim, that if I like the look of it, I'll either put it on my layer and I'll run it as long as it's some sort of believability factor. That's about the only thing I'll apply to it. I don't care what part of the world it comes from. Um, so we'll look at that. So I'm very much looking forward to the Zoom meeting coming up, Jim. Um, unfortunately... It's, oh, I am too. So, so I'm long glad, down that, you, I'm glad that you agreed to do it. Yeah, no, that's yeah. going to be really good because I'm, as you know, I'm pretty passionate about the the train controller and the the computer dispatch and all all that side of things. Um, so that'd be great. So, Jim, I applaud you for your your achievements um, within this hobby. You're a true gentleman and a true scholar regarding helping modelers out. Um, and I know I'll be touching base with you more in the future, definitely to, to get ideas and um, and modelling tips, I'm sure. So thank you very much for coming along on my channel this evening, and I look forward to, to catching up with you in the future. My pleasure, Darren. Good talking. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.